Welcome to this episode of Caillou Talks. I'm Caillou Ninja, and I am super pumped to get this podcast started. Let's cut to the chase. Today, we're going to talk about chasing your dreams. You're going to meet a friend of mine who traveled across the Atlantic Ocean to chase his dreams. He comes from England, a place called Yorkshire, to be exact. His name is James Oates. I have interviewed guests today who have faced down incredible odds to achieve their goals. Who wouldn't take no for an answer? We heard their stories, learned some lessons, and talked about how they make an impact in their community. Today's guest is no different. The great Jurgen Klopp once said, Anyone can have a good day, but you have to be able to perform on a bad day if you want special results. You have to perform when you aren't feeling your best. Yep, I can definitely feel that. It's easy to do well when you feel great, right? But when you're chasing your dreams, you have to do your best even when you're not at your best. I know I can certainly identify with this quote, and I think my guest today will as well. James Oates is a professional soccer player and coach. Football, or, or what we call soccer, is his passion and dream. He loves sharing his skills and experiences to help grow the game of soccer here in America. He's also a big-time supporter of Leeds United. And while I might be a Liverpool Red like my dad Thomas, James knows that here on Caillou Talks, he will never walk alone. Let's get to know this guy. James, great to have you here, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Now, James, welcome to Caillou Talks. Talks, talks, talks. I did the echo thing. I'm so glad that you're able to spend my time with us today. I know your time is very valuable, and I really appreciate spending some of it with me. I, you know, love being here. Thank you for having me. Tell me more about you. Do you have a family? Do you have, do you have kids? Do you have a wonderful life? I like to think I have a wonderful life, yeah. I don't have any kids, no. I live um, here with my wife. Um, we've been here now for 10 years plus. She's actually American and we lived over in England previously. I have a lot of family over if there. If your mother's watching us right now, what would you like to say to her? My mother? Hi, mom. Love you. And your wife, too? <laughs> I love you, too. And to you, James' mom, you raised a good kid. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Mm. So tell me where you come from and how you came to America. Was it like a hard journey? Um, I guess it's, I could answer it in two ways, really. I actually came over here when I was 18 uh, to play soccer, to play football. Um, I went to college over here and then I went back to England and then met my now, now wife in England. And then we, you know, we lived there for seven or eight years uh, together and then uh, moved over here since then. So it's kind of like a, a twofold story, really, a little bit. Why did you want to become a professional soccer player? I have loved the game of soccer, football, since I was like, just kind of ever since growing up, you know, since I can first remember, really. Um, it it's, wasn't too much of a choice in some ways. My, my dad was a professional football player. My granddad was a professional football player. I actually almost made it. I, I can't count myself as a pro, you know, per se. Um, but loved the game. We've been playing it, you know, forever. Um, and really, it's just kind of, you know, we go out to the field with my my dad and my brother and kick the ball about, kick the ball about with friends. It's a, a big culture over there, you know, and so just love the game and that's how I got involved in it. That's nice. Why soccer? What is it about soccer you love more than other sports? It's a great question. Um, I think, obviously, there are other sports, like who, you know, they're, they're kind of team-based, right, but soccer as well. And so there's a big challenge to it. There's a, a saying, you're only as good as your last game. And so it's constantly, you know, the challenge of uh, keeping up the level of uh, quality that you give on the field. But then kind of looking back after playing, you know, I, I only play really kind of, you know, with friends and stuff now. It's all about being part of the team and having fun with your, with your friends, really. Um, and that's what, why everybody, I think, first starts playing. You know, the five, six, seven years old, then they just want to have fun first and foremost. And... Um, yeah, it got more competitive as I, you know, as I got older, but um, you just love having fun and, and the game has given me so much fun and you know, that's why uh, I loved it, I think. That's great. Also, I have something about the show. What do you think about the meme being challenged at every single video? 
Uh, I am not looking forward to it. You, is it going to be inevitable? Uh, I've got a feeling from what we, you know, spoken about before. I may be eating some not nice stuff. But you said you told me there was a chance that it might, you know, I might be all right. I might get some nice stuff. Is that right? Might empathise on mine. So, do you miss England? Uh, yeah, yeah. I definitely miss my family and friends. You know, a lot of them are over there. Um, you know, bits of it as well. Uh, but what if I told you that they might be watching this? I would say hello. Um, I get a great, you know, I get to go back three or four times a year. And what if I um, told so you great. that they might be watching you eat disgusting jelly beans? Then if I was them, I would definitely be laughing, which I'm sure if they you, will be. If, if, if you do a belief, you will think that you are be the laughing, <laughs> you will be the target of, inter, of the uh, internet. I'm sure they would be loving, you know, loving it. I'm sure they can't wait for me to eat the worst one. Also, the worst one, stink bug. Stink bug. Yeah. Doesn't sound great. It doesn't. But you're doing this as well, right? Yeah, I am. Okay. But I'm undefeated. If you could bring one thing from England to America with no question to act instantaneously, what would it be? Family and friends, for sure. Okay. Um, absolutely. This is a question I ask everyone. How was middle school for you? Great question again. Um Middle school, a lot of school for me, if I'm honest, was about sport. So it wasn't just football, but, you know, lots of other games as well, like, you know, cricket, tennis, rugby, you know, a bunch of different things that I played. And if there was ever a chance for me to play something, then I would be out there playing it, whether that was on the, like the playground or whether, you know, after school, as soon as school finished, really, then me and my friends would be down to the field and we'd be playing whatever game it was playing on a bunch of different teams. So sport was a massive part of it for me. Um, there was the schoolwork in there as well. You know, obviously, and I think as I got older, certainly after middle school, then I realised, you know, you have to keep your grades up and you, and all that as well. But that was kind of a secondary thing for me. It was just, a you know, a chance to be there with my friends and um, play a bunch of sport. That's nice. What makes a great coach? Great coach? Um... I think, like, you obviously have to have things like the knowledge of the game and um, the understanding of the game and et cetera. But I think it's like any, like any kind of great teacher as well, you've got to be able to connect, you know, with your, the players that you're working with and you have to be able to get your ideas across to them. I'm sure you must have your favourite teacher. Everybody, you know, has it. If, yeah, if you asked anybody, they, they would know and, and there's reasons for My favourite teacher is my ELA teacher. Okay. He's so nice. There you go. But if you can make it fun for them, then first and foremost, I think, you know, everybody in enjoys that. You've got to be able to connect with your players and you've got to have empathy for them. You know, there's a lot of kind of, you know, coaches who'll be like, you must do this, you must do that, but ne don't necessarily know what's going on, you know, behind the scenes with each player and everybody's different. And you've got to be able to make, um, you know, that connection with the players and understand what, what drives them, what motivates them. What makes a great soccer player? Um, again, a bunch of different things. I think you have to be, you have to have some talent, you know, in there. Um, but then like, to me, it's all, a, a lot of it is about your attitude and how you approach things. And, um, you know, having, I think, you know, this podcast that you do, everything about it is great. And you raise so many issues and, um, it's kind of how you overcome certain things is a big part of it as an athlete. You, there's going to be times when you lose. There's going to be times when you're not playing well. There's going to be times when you face adversity. And if you have talent, that'll help. But there's no way that you're going to overcome all them without the right attitude. So I'd say talent, attitude, and then hard work as well. Yeah, if you There's no athlete anywhere, I don't think. And this could, you know, translates across, you know, work or whatever. If you don't work hard, you're not really going to get anywhere. So what was the best lesson you learned on the field that helped you off the field? Um, been a few. Uh, I would say this goes back to when I was like six years old, something like that. And I remember it vividly. It was a cold day in England. There's lots of days are cold in England, but this one was particularly cold. And I was playing in a game and... Uh, I think my f my fingers were literally blue. It was that cold and there was a player with the ball dribbled off and I just stopped, stopped running after them. I didn't want to do it anymore. And after the game, my parents, my mum and dad, absolutely <laughs> told me off and said, you can never, you know, you should never stop trying. 
That's the worst thing you can do. You can have good games, bad games, but you've got to keep on trying. And I think that translates to, to life as well. And, um, you know, if there's no effort, then what are we here for? I think it's another deep one. If there was any achieve, if there's any mistakes that you want to reverse, what would it be? Oh, like in in soccer, in football, or in life, in, life. Or in, in, in life, life in, in general? general. Oh my, I've made so many. You know what? I wouldn't change anything, and I, I think that the mistakes help to make you better. And if you learn from the mistakes, the trick is never to make the same mistake twice. I guess. Um, so I've made a ton, both you know in my life and in in you know playing sports etc um but if you're not pushing yourself then you're probably not going to make mistakes and if you're not pushing yourself you're not going to get better and so yes made mistakes but i own them all you learn from them and you go forward that's what i love about people right same in life isn't it so i have two more questions this is the final two questions the final two yes final boss okay Second one, what was your childhood like? And second one, what would, what would you, did you have any friends in, that you miss? All right. Uh, what was my childhood like? Uh, I was very lucky to have a, a, a quality family in terms of they were very supportive, very loving, um, and a lot of friends around me as well. So I'd like to think that my, you know, very happy memories of my childhood, a lot of sports, you know, um, a lot of nice family trips away, different holidays, vacations, and stuff like that. Um, but I was very lucky growing up, um, and so thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd, I'd moved a little bit, so we did live in a place called Leeds, which is why I'm a you know Leeds fan, Leeds United. Um, and then we moved a little bit further up north to a place called Durham. Um, and so I had some friends in Leeds and family in Leeds, and then we moved up to Durham and made new uh, friends up there as well. Um, and then, second question. Do you have any friends in your childhood that you missed? Yeah, one of the great things about football is that you make a ton of friends. Um, and so there's a, a lot in England right now that it's easier now with, you know, connecting over social media and, and stuff that you can stay in touch with them and just send quick photos, and, you know, things like that. Um, but definitely miss just being able to go 10 minutes down the road and have a cup of tea or something like that, you know, with them. Um, and... You know, it is what it is, and made a, a bunch of friends over here as well now. So, welcome everyone to the Mean Bean Challenge. <laughs> so let me show you the rules. This is a new be Mean Bean Challenge dispenser, three thousand. You just gotta lift it, and the jelly bean will open. So today's challenger from Jolly Good Old England, it is James Oates, and in the red square. The undefeated survivor, the ultimate jelly bean survivor, Caillou Leaf. Let's, let's see the rules, shall we? Go for it. Now, each of you has a mug of shame. If any of you drinks the mug of shame, you will automatically forfeit the match. The goal is to survive three taste jelly beans. In, that's six jelly, jelly beans in total. Got it. Here is, here is James. Mr. James takes a force move. You have to lift it. I'm just looking which ones I'm going to get birthday cake, right? Mm. And then put it back down. He gets oh. three jelly beans. He, now he has to choose. Which this one? is big. I'm quite nervous at this. I'm just going to take the top one. Which one will he Is choose? that a good move? Are you happy with that? He chose the barf one. Since you touched it, you have to <laughs> You want me to eat it straight away? Yeah. Don't break this wrong, but it's actually very interesting. And don't forget, people will see this. Is it barf? Is it bad? Beautiful. Is it? What is it? Buttered popcorn, I think. He is lucky, my friend. Love that. Back in. All right, good luck. Come on, be a good one. Be a good one. It's bad. Uh oh, what is it? Dirty dishwater. In the water. Right, the water tastes lovely right now. 
Caillou has survived yet again. Well done. This is now James' second round. Would you like me to, can I try some more? Yes. Or do I have to take that one? You should now get the choice of what? Show right. universe, bring James. Do you know which ones these are? Yes. You either get a stinky egg or buttered popcorn with that one. James <sighs> is now going for it. Is it bad? Mm hmm. Well, James, James the water and forfeit the match. That's not good. I'm not a big fan of eggs as it is. Will the soccer god lose against the, the young artistic advocate? Oh, that's horrible. But no, I'm not. Your turn. Oh. Good one? Be a oh. good one. You deserve a good one. Is it a bad one? Uh oh. Let me just turn this for you. Just it's barf. Oh, no. You sure you don't want some water? No. Caillou has survived a second round. Well this done. is the final round. Well done. Come on, we made it. This one looks interesting. What could this be? No one knows. Next, and this is the final round of the mean bean. Is it bad? Oh, Ooh, that's nice. Okay. Beautiful, that. Caillou's now trying this, the fi his final one. This is it. Come on, be a good one for you. You good? Yes. Caillou has done it. We made it. They both have done it. It is a draw. Congrats. Well done. I'm really glad you got to meet my friend James. As I mentioned at the top of the show, this episode is about chasing your dreams. James chased his dream and led it all the way across the ocean to here in the U.S. Quite the journey, am I right? Our guest talked to us about the challenges he faced, the doubts he had, and the will it took to achieve his childhood dream. Whether it's on the pitch playing or on the touchline coaching, James has seen it all and shared what he learned with young people to inspire them to chase their dreams too. Let's take another look at the quote I opened today, shall we? The great Jurgen Klopp once said, Anyone can have a good day, but you have to be able to perform on a bad day. If you want special results, you have to perform when you aren't feeling your best. I get it. I totally get it. It's easy to go on and do great things when you feel great, right? But you also have to be willing to put in the work even when you're not at your best. See what I mean? And when you try your best, even when you're not at your best, you'll look back and be proud for what you did. Very motivating, am I right? Because you could have quit, but you didn't. You were brave, and you did not give up. And remember, just like the song they sing in every Liverpool match, walk on with hope in your heart, and you will never walk alone. I'm Kai Ninja. Thank you for joining me here on Kai Talks. Don't forget to check out the website at kaiutalkspodcast.com and subscribe to my socials and buy yourself some merch. <laughs>